Okay, and welcome to the Morphing Creatures tutorial. And in this video, we're going to do some pretty wild and crazy things. We're going to take a lizard and a hippo, and we're just going to combine them together and create this creature that you see on the screen right now. Let me move over to the file browser and I'll show you the images that I used here. All I did was I, I taken a stock image of a hippo and another stock image of a lizard and basically just cropped them down. I cropped the hippo and I placed it over the head of the lizard and this is the result that we got. Now I'll go ahead and give away the secret here but if I make this hippo head invisible you can see hello we see the lizard there looking at us like what the heck are you doing to my head but that's pretty much the trick right there and you can also see that I've colorized the entire image as well Just add a little bit of that blue in there will bring out a little bit more detail and inside the hippo skin and also the lizard skin and I really like that also I've darkened the background behind the hippo head that way by darkening the background it made the hippo head stand out just a little bit more you see that and so we're gonna do all this on this video so go ahead and sit back and relax and let's get started so first let's go into the Adobe bridge or any file browser and locate the morphing creatures folder inside the project files folder on the CD-ROM and you'll find the images that you see here this is all we need basically you're gonna find the hippo cropped PSD and all this is is basically the same thing as the hippo stock image but I went ahead and cropped it for you so if you wanna go ahead and skip the cropping step then you can just load this image up here and work off that and you also find the lizard image that I have here and then also the completed morphing creatures uh, image that's right here so let's go ahead and go back to Photoshop and oh, before I do that though let me go ahead and just open up the image that we are gonna start with and so in this case let's open up the lizard alright and next let's open up the hippo stock image that's right here I'll go ahead and double click on that now when it comes to morphing creatures or if you're combining other it could be a reptile a, a, an animal or a frog or whatever when you're combining two things together the hardest part is finding the photos I mean really because the morphing process is actually pretty simple to do so really the the most difficult part with this whole process is actually just finding two photos that are going to really work with each other because unless you're taking the photos yourself if you're not well you have to go out and hunt around and look for a, like like a head or an arm or a leg that is going in the right direction so it will fit with the other photo that you have okay so I, I went ahead and the first thing you should do is just go ahead and pick out any image for your base image and just try to be creative something that looks nice a lizard, a frog, or a cat, or a dog, or whatever. Anything that looks nice. And then go off or go out and find another image that the with the direction that you're looking for, if it could be a person or a cow or a zebra or whatever, how they're standing and just the angle of how they're standing or you know what they're doing with their arms. And then try to imagine it. Uh, paste it over or combine it with your original image. So what I did here originally is I found the lizard image first and then I said okay well what are we gonna do with this image and how am I gonna create this creature and I don't even know what type of creature I'm gonna create yet so I went ahead and just looked around and I found this hippo head and I wasn't even originally planning on creating the hippo head or putting the putting a hippo onto the lizard I didn't originally plan that I just went off and looked around to get inspiration and then I found this and I said you know what that looks like it might work now it's not going the right direction so what I did before I even purchased the image because don't purchase the image yet until you know for sure that it's gonna work because I've went off and, and, and purchased expensive stock photos and realized that they just don't work at all so and, and then you just kinda have that image laying around but what I like to do is just sort of get like a like a sample or a screenshot or just take like the the watermarked image from wherever you're buying the image from and just take that into Photoshop and you can 
pasted over the other image. So all I did is I just took this hippo and I flipped it around like this. And then I selected just, you know, really basic selection here. I copied it into memory. And then I just pasted it over my lizard image like this. And I just moved it around and I resized it. And this is what I did to really see, you know, if this is going to work. All right, and so let's go ahead and begin. And what we're going to do first is crop the hippo. Okay, yes, we're going to have to crop again. Uh, it's lots of extensive cropping on these DVDs. But I'm going to go ahead and crop the hippo, and you're going to watch. I'm just going to go through here and use the pen tool. I'm going to zoom in. And it's okay if you want to crop an area or go a certain way where you just want to be safe that you get, you know, even areas that you don't even think you're going to have on the final morphing creature, uh, you know, go ahead and just include it. I want to grab the pin tool on the toolbar and just zoom in here to the hippo and just start making a path around the hippo. And then later I'll just turn this path into a selection and that'll allow us to crop the hippo out of this image and paste it into the lizard image. While we crop this, we're going to want to include the whiskers. I just thought it'd be totally cool and to just make it a little bit more realistic than it already is. Let's go ahead and I want you to make the path around these whiskers here at the very top or little hairs that are on his upper lip or mouth here, or, or actually I think that's the nose. and. I want you to, to just crop around that and then come back. Come back to the hippo head. And continue cropping around. Cropping does take a little bit of time, but a lot of people look at the images, most of the amazing images that have been done in Photoshop are the ones that have just taken more time. And if you're always wondering, what do the pros do? Well, this is what the pros do. It takes more time, but the result is well worth the effort. If you've ever asked a photographer, you know, what's the secret behind taking his photographs or, you know, if you ever ask a, a filmmaker or a director of photography or whatever, they'll always tell you they just stick to the basics. And a graphic designer, a professional a graphic designer, Photoshop user or whatever will tell you the exact same thing. They just stick to the basics. Me personally, I don't have any very advanced techniques. I just, you'll see on this video, on these videos, on these DVDs, that everything is pretty much just very simple. It's, I'm not using any, uh, you know, complicated tools or anything like that. Most of it is just a layer mask with a crop and a paintbrush. And that's pretty much it. It's just, I think a lot of people try to complicate Photoshop a little bit more than it really is. 
it can be a little bit intimidating because of all the tools and all the little things you see and all the little menus. But really, it just it comes down to just a really a few tools. If you know how to use them right, you can pretty much create anything you want. So anyways, let's get back to the tutorial here. You can see that I've created a path around the hippo. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and right click inside the path here. And then I'm going to make that or turn that into a selection by selecting make selection. Feather radius zero, make sure anti-aliased is checked. Go ahead and click OK. And you will see a selection form around the hippo head. Easy enough. All right, let's go ahead and come up here to edit copy. After you've copied that, let's go over here to the lizard image, and then I want you to go over here to edit, paste. Great. So after we've done that, let's go ahead and rename that layer, or this layer here, to hippo, or hippo head, whatever you want. And I'm going to double click on the background just to unlock that. And we're going to name that lizard. The background layer is always locked by default. Uh, you can't really do a whole lot with it, but what I like to do is just go ahead and double click on it. And not only can you name the layer, but you can also just unlock it just by renaming it. So that's pretty easy to do. And now we don't need this hippo stock image any longer because we have it over on this image over here. So let's go ahead and just close this image out. I'll select, no, I don't want to save the changes. And so here we are in the final image here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and save this. So I'm going to come right up here to File, Save As, and we'll just call this uh, Morphing Creatures 2. That way I don't copy over the original, and I'm just going to go ahead and press Enter key on the keyboard. All right, so here we go. Well, let's look at what we have here. We have the hippo lizard, or the, sorry, the hippo head on its own separate layer, and we have the lizard as the background. Okay, well, there's not a whole lot we need to do with the, with the lizard layer uh, until later on we're going to apply some image adjustments and things like that to it so we really need to focus on the hippo head right now so let's go ahead and just play around with this a little bit what i can do and if you're using photoshop cs2 you can actually turn this hippo head into a smart object by turning it into a smart object, that will make that layer non-destructible. So we can, you know, resize it. If we find that we've resized it too small, we can make it larger. We can rotate it. The image will always retain optimal quality. Okay. Now, if you don't have Photoshop CS2, you're not going to be able to make a smart object. It's okay. It's nothing really, it's anything big to worry about. Uh, many of us have got along for many years without smart objects. So all you have to do is make just, you can make a copy of the original. I would probably hi highly recommend it. Come in here and drag the hippo head to the new layer icon and make just a duplicate or yeah, just make a copy of it. That way, if you ever need to go back or if you screw up the original, then then you've, you've got to like paste it all over again and, and get the image back. But by making a copy, if you do mess up the copy, that's okay. You can just come back to this layer, okay? But because we have smart objects, and I'm using Photoshop CS2, and for those of you that are using CS2, I'm gonna make that hippo head layer active, and then what I'll do is just come over here to layer, and down here to smart objects, and then just say, I wanna group that into a smart object. There we go. And you know it's a smart object because you'll see a little tiny icon a little, little little file icon down on the bottom right of the thumbnail and that'll just tell you that this is a smart object and that if you ever wanted to edit this layer you can't do it you can't edit the actual contents on this layer directly in this image you have to actually double click on it and then when you do that it'll say uh, after you edit please save the changes or you're gonna need to save the changes for it to affect this image. Let me show you. I'm going to click OK. And as soon as I click OK, you can see the hippo head opens up in a new window. Now this, this is so we can edit this layer totally separate from our master image, which is over here. And Photoshop 
saves or creates a temporary file which is called a PSB file, which is all it's always there. It's built into the PSD file and, and so I don't really know how it all works, but they call it a PSB file that you can see right here. So any changes that I make to this hippo, let's say that I just come in here and and hopefully I don't screw this up completely here. But I'm gonna come in here and just erase his eyeball like this. Now if I come over here to file save, let me go some I think okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to come over here to File, Save, and then go back to this image over here. Give it one second, and look at that. It'll update. And so <laughs> the eyeball on this image, there's, I mean, I mean, there's no eyeball anymore because I've erased it over on this image right here. Now, I could undo on the PSB image right here, get that eyeball back, go to File, Save, and then go back to the project image over here, and now watch, it'll reappear. So we can totally edit the layers in, in just different files and not edit them directly on the project uh, Im images that we're working on. So you understand how Smart Objects works. That was kind of like the crash course on <laughs> Smart Objects, so bear with me here. But we don't need the PSB file open any longer, so I'm going to go ahead and just close that. Great. So now remember when we were cropping the hippo, we avoided the very top of his nose here. You see those little tiny hairs, little whisker hairs there? Well, we want to keep those intact. We don't want to just, you know, crop and cut them off. We want to just remove the background and keep the hairs there. So if we if we did this with the pen tool, it would be just tedious work. We'd have to come through here and go up and down every single little hair and it would have just been a nightmare. Let me show you a much easier way to do this and you can do this with fur or longer hair and again there's actually a tutorial with the Photoshop Top Secret course called Masking Fur and that will show you a little bit more in depth on how all this works but we're gonna go ahead and do it on this video as well. So now before I continue I just want to let you know that we're going to utilize the smart object technology in Photoshop CS2 for this one next part, okay? If you don't have Photoshop CS2, if you have an earlier version, then just skip the smart object part and just work off the uh, the master image that you see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the smart object icon on the hippo head layer. I'll go ahead and click OK and that will open up the hippo head and a new image here, new window, which is the PSB file. So what I'll do next is zoom in to the very top of his nose. Now if you're working off this image over here, now you can start to follow along with me. So just go ahead and continue along. But we're gonna, for Photoshop CS2 users, we're gonna go ahead and work off this PSB image. So what I'm gonna do is go over here on the toolbar and you see this little button at the bottom of the toolbar, it's called Edit in Quick Mask Mode. I want you to click on that right now. Then I want you to select the pink brush. And then I want you to right click on the image to get up the brush options. And we're going to create this size brush here because we're going to paint over the very top of his nose. But for this step you don't want it to be too small. Okay I'll just click outside of that. Now make sure that you can see the size of your brush. If your brush looks like a crosshair, which looks like this. You can probably barely see it. You know, it's just, it's a lot easier to work with the size of the brush. So all you have to do is press the caps lock key on the keyboard and you can flip back and forth between the crosshair and the brush size. All right, so here we go. And what I think I'm gonna do is come down here and click on the foreground because we're in quick mask mode. So in order to see the mask, we must paint with black. And when we do, we should see red. Now you can make that any color you want, but I won't be getting into that right now. Let's just zoom into the very top of his nose here. With the brush, I want you to just come along and I want you to pretend like you're cropping the very top of his nose. So in that case, I want you to get very close to the edge of his nose there. Or upper lip. I think this is just kind of a combination of both. So, <laughs> But yeah, don't not you don't want to get in this area here you just want to go on the very edge you see that now don't worry about the hair right now I want you to just ignore the hair 
and go right on the edge of his body. Now you can use this technique on so many different images with hair and fur and you know antennas. Anything, anytime when you really want to crop a very small fine detailed area then you can use this and this will work on just about anything. Look at that. I'm just going to go right down and there we go. And it doesn't look like much but you can see that we've just painted over the edge of this nose here. Great. All right, what's the next step? Well, we must turn down the mask. And basically what I mean is we're going to decrease the visibility of this mask because we need to see the hairs through the mask. Now what you can do is you can actually just make the, make the mask go away completely. But we're just going to go in here to the opacity and maybe just turn that down to 5%. Now the mask is still there, it's just at a very low opacity. And I can just go 20% and you can still just barely see it. But we know it's there, so I'm going to go ahead and just put 5%. And then zoom back into the image, just a little bit closer. And to move around the image I can press the space bar on the keyboard and that gives me the hand tool to navigate around the image. Let's make sure that the brush tool is selected again and I want you to right click to get the settings. Now I want you to lower the opacity or lower the diameter of the brush, excuse me, and I want you to lower that down so the size of the brush is about the same size as the hairs or as the little whiskers here. So in this case, we're going to have to go pretty small. So we're probably going to have to go like two pixels. Yeah. And the hardness all the way up, 100%. Okay. Now I want you to make that foreground, I want you to change that foreground to white. Okay. So click on the foreground color, change that to white. And then I want you to bring, or we can zoom in just a little bit closer here. And all we're going to do is paint where the whiskers are, where the hair is. And I can just turn this opacity, opacity up just a little bit more, it'd be 15%. And that's all you have to do, is paint where you see the whiskers. That's, you know, it's pretty easy to do. I'll just come in here. And I'm probably just going to turn that up a little more because I think, yeah, and if it's, I might have to turn it back down, but now you can see a little bit of what I'm what I'm doing here, almost like reverse masking, sort of. That's I know I can't think of, that's pretty much what it seems like to me. Now see the mask is just a little bit too dark. I'm going to decrease the opacity and grab that brush and just paint where those whiskers are. You can go back and adjust the opacity if you need to. You can turn it up or down just based on where you're at. Because I know some darker areas might make those whiskers appear. In some areas, they won't appear. <laughs> so there you go. Just grab the brush and go around here. Wherever you think a little hair is or a little whisker, just click and paint. Now don't go too far. You don't want to go up too far like this because, you know, that's not really... You only want to go so far uh, right where the right where the little whisker stops is where you should stop. And this is just a lot of fun. 
Now, if we were to do this with the pen tool, it would just, it would take forever. And it wouldn't be as much fun, I tell you that. Okay, it looks like I've done that spot there a couple times. I think I'm gonna let it be. And all right, great. So that's pretty good. We don't want to go too crazy. And so let's go ahead and we can turn this mask back up and I can show you something here. Now look at here. See, we've we've just painted into the mask. We've erased into the mask and revealing the whiskers. All right, so the next step. Well, easy enough. Let's just go back to standard mode and click on edit, edit in standard mode, this button right here, and you should see this become a selection. The mask that we've just created, that should become a selection. Well, here's the magic, folks. All you have to do is come down over here on the bottom of the layers palette, and you'll find the add layer mask button right here. Now, as soon as I click that, there is the magic. Now we just see the whiskers and no background. Now we have a little bit of excess area here. That's no big deal at all. I'll just go ahead and, well, I'll just go ahead and select a brush and paint over that to make that go away. Let's zoom out and check it out. Look at that. Now see how crisp that is. All right, so if you are in the PSB file, which is the smart object file, then you'll need to save in order for it to affect our master project image over here. So let's go ahead up here to edit, or I'm sorry, file and save. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and close this image. And now this image will update. Look at that. All right, so the next step, what we're gonna do is position the hippo head over the lizard's head, just so we can kind of get an idea exactly where it's gonna be and how it's gonna fit. So let's go over here to edit, down here to free transform, and we must rotate and resize the hippo head because obviously it's just way too big the way it is right now. But I'm gonna hold down shift on the keyboard, and by doing this, it retains this aspect ratio when I resize. You see that? If I don't hold down the shift key, then it's just gonna be all distorted. So hold down shift, and then I'll click and drag this over a little bit. I'm gonna go on the top corner here of the selection and rotate that around and just position the hippo head over the lizard layer there. Now, if you look really closely, I really did luck out on the hippo uh, image here because there's something here. Let me go ahead and give it a second to catch up. There we go. You can see there's in the back of his or on the side of his neck here on the hippo, he has this little wrinkle or a little, uh, yeah, it's like a little wrinkle there or like a, uh, a little crease in his neck and you can see that rides along almost right where the lizard's leg is look at that and sometimes you get really lucky I love it when this stuff happens but if I just move this down if I make it just a little bit smaller we can see that we could probably take advantage of this little little uh, roll or wrinkle or whatever it is in his skin and just line that up with the leg so I know later on I could just totally blend this area right in with the lizard's leg and, and make it look perfect. That way when you look at it, you're like, you know, how the heck did he do that? So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I have this positioned correctly over the lizard here. And this part, it might take a little bit of time. Don't rush this part. Just take your time and move the hippo around with the transformation still active and try to just line it up as best you can. And if you want to, you can go ahead and lower the opacity before you select edit transformation or free transform. What you can do is lower the opacity of the hippo and then come over here to edit free transform. And then you, what you can do, you can see the lizard underneath there. And so you can make sure that the hippo head is completely covering all the areas where the lizard's head is. And if it's not, it's no big deal because we can just uh, patch that up if we want to later on. 
And I'm being ultra picky right now anyways, but uh, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to, what I want to do is line the hippo neck area here up with the lizard's back. That same horizontal plane there, that just the same angle. You can see the same angle as the lizard, but I want to watch closely at this wrinkle here at the bottom. Make sure that I have the top and the bottom here lined up. That looks pretty good. All right, let's zoom out here and see what this looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and turn up the opacity of this layer. Looks pretty good. I want you to keep in mind that it's not only blending the two objects together. Another important factor is the coloring. So we have to match, we have to turn or colorize this hippo head to match the lizard. You can see in the final image here, this is the case. So I've colorized the lizard or the hippo head to match the lizard skin perfectly. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I want you to do is hold down the Alt key, which is the Option key on the Mac, come down to the bottom of the Layers palette, you'll find a little icon, little circle with a little half black, half white circle here. Click on that, and what this will allow us to do is create an image adjustment above the Hippo Head layer. I want you to, I want you to select the Color Balance image adjustment right here. And as soon as that dialog comes up, just make sure you have a checkbox in the Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Put a check in that. Go ahead and click OK. All right. What we're going to do is add some green into the hippo head because obviously the lizard is green. So I'm going to just come down here to the middle slider and move that towards the green area there. And then also we can add a little bit of yellow. We have to look closely at the lizard here and try to see what type of colors it has and so we'll just adjust the color balance accordingly. I'll go and add a little bit of yellow and I don't think we'll need a red or anything. Well maybe we do. Look at that. There's a little bit of red inside that lizard and so you can see that you have a lot of control by using the color balance to do this. And Here's another thing. If it's not perfect don't worry about it because since we've made this an adjustment layer I can click OK and then double click on the image adjustment icon and go right back into the color balance and just make another adjustment. So we're never stuck with, you know, we're not permanently affecting the layer and it's not for good. We can always come back anytime. But I want you to get it as, as close as possible. Don't worry about perfecting it right now. Just get the, close, the, get the color as close to the lizard color as you can. And even I'm being a little bit fussy with this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that the way it is and click OK. All right, so what can we do now? Well, let's go ahead and create a layer mask. And by creating the layer mask, we are going to mask out all the areas around the hippo here that we don't want. Because these aren't just, you know, the areas that, that are really not going to help us much in making this look you know, as real as possible. So let's make sure that the hippo head layer is active and come down to the bottom of the layers palette and just click on the add a layer mask button, which is right here. And that will create a mask. You should see a little white square there next to the, to the layer. I'm going to select the zoom tool and just zoom in to the hippo head here. And let's click on or make sure that the layer mask is selected. Sometimes this thumbnail over here will be selected, but make sure that the hippo lay, uh, layer mask is selected. You sh should see a little line around it. And select the brush tool on the toolbar, and I'm going to increase the diameter of this brush. Now for this, we're going to have to go back and forth between the hardness settings. Okay, I like to start with no hardness at all. I'm going to do an area over here that I know I could probably get away without, you know, just using a soft brush here. So I'll click outside of that and make sure I have the foreground set to black. And then I can just come in here and very carefully go around the hippo head or the hippo neck here, whatever you, whatever it is, 
and just go around with my brush and start erasing everything away so it starts to look like the hippo is a part of this lizard. Now remember, we're not really erasing any part of this hippo. It's only a mask. You can just change the foreground to white, come over to the keyboard and press the DNX key, DNX on the keyboard, and that'll change the foreground to white. And you can paint back the hippo. Okay, so it's always there, don't worry. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like you're erasing it for good, but... All right. I think because a lot of people starting with Photoshop will just grab the eraser tool. And then, you know, that's a no-no. I don't, I don't think I hardly ever use the eraser tool. Because once you erase it, then that's it. It's just erased for good. Unless you have a copy of it or a back it, or you've backed it up or whatever. I always use a layer mask as, as much as possible, anytime I can. And so hopefully from this day on, if you are a beginner, then you will use the layer mask too. Looking pretty good. I want to go ahead and I noticed that the brush is needs to be just a little bit softer. And I'm just going to come in here with this brush. I'm not going to be too fussy right now. I'm just going to get the general idea on how I want this to look. And obviously that's just, this is way too soft right now. I'll bring it back a little bit. Look at that. And I'll define that edge later on. I just really want to get an idea on if this would really pass or not. Looks like his, it's a little baggy there on the bottom of the hippo head. So I'm just going to take that off just a little bit. Even go up in that lizard a little bit more. Turn down the hardness. So we get that to blend. Always try to use the original. If you do have the original creature or object underneath the layer that you're replacing it with here, it, you know, just try to use those shapes and underneath there to help you get it just right. That looks pretty good because because I think the the lizard's neck is sort of it's 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 not as thick as the hippo's neck so we're gonna have to just go off the lizard neck there and then just sort of make it look like it's getting wider as it gets towards the mouth of the hippo you see that and I'm just gonna change that foreground to white and increase the hardness of that brush and then go back in here and just paint this back at that. Whoops. Go ahead and uh, change that to black. Okay. I'm not going to worry about this edge too much. I'm just, I can always come back to this. Just want to get the general idea. Uh, a lot of the final touches and, and things uh, like that, you can just do that later on. So what do you think? I mean, does it look pretty good? It looks like on the top of his, on the top right here, I don't know if it's me or if that doesn't, that looks like we've taken a little bit too much off of, of the top there. Uh, Looks like we did. Okay, I see what we're doing here. Just wanting to make that look as real as possible. Just bring that that transition with the neck here. Make that just a nice smooth 
transition there. Look at that. Cool. Okay. Lizard's got a big head. <laughs> big hippo head there. All right. That's looking pretty hot. I like it. And we've gotten the color pretty dang close to the lizard color there. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. All right. Now let's look over here and you can see that the lizard is popping out of the mouth and maybe just a little bit on top there or it mostly looks like it's uh, seeping or coming through it's showing through on the other side of the hippo head well that's easy to do that's easy to cover up because all we have to do is click on the lizard layer and we can use several tools here we can use the healing brush but I think no we're gonna use the clone stamp tool for this and if you're not sure, just try a tool. The clone stamp tool will allow us to pick up an area next to the area that we want to patch. So in other words, I can make this hippo go away here. And let's go ahead and save the changes so far. And so if I, I have the clone stamp tool currently, and if I hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, which is the Option key on the Mac, hold down that key, you will see that the brush will change to this little crosshair with a little circle around it. Well, this is sort of like a target. And we're targeting what we want to sample. So, well, we want to get rid of the uh, lizard's nose here because that's just showing through the mouth and that's not really cool. So let's sample an area next to the nose by holding down Alt, Option on the Mac, click, and then bring that brush over and then click again. And you can see it's just patched that up. Now I can probably click again and again. Now if I go back to the hippo, it looks like you know it, it's really not even there. And if I look at the very top of the hippo head, you can see this bright spot right there. Well, I think that is from the lizard as well. And sure enough, it is. So I can keep the hippo layer active just to make sure I'm doing a good job. And what I'll do is make sure the layer the lizard layer is selected with the clone stamp. I'll make that a little bit smaller because we don't need it that big. I'll come right up above that bright area, hold down Alt, Option on the Mac, sample an area in the background, bring the brush over and click once and it's gone. That's it. So now we don't, uh, at least for, from what I can see, we don't we don't have that lizard there in the background showing through. Because if we do, then that's just a dead giveaway that that the creature's not real. It's supposed to be an actual real-life creature. So <laughs> There was something that I wanted to include on the tutorial. If you have a type of skin on one animal or one creature, well, you can transport the skin onto the other creature that you've applied to the image, such as the hippo. Well, I thought it would be really cool to bring in some of these scales from the lizard skin here, bring those scales in and paste them over the, the hippo skin. All right, first I want you to click on the topmost layer in the layers palette, and then go ahead and click on the new layer icon, or new layer button, which is right here. Then come over to the toolbar and make sure the clone stamp tool is selected. I want you to come up to the clone stamp tool options at the very top here. You see where it says sample all layers? I want you to make sure that's checked, okay? Because what that means is that if that's checked, then Photoshop will sample whatever it sees. So from this layer that we're currently on and all the layers below that one. And before we continue, let's go ahead and make this uh, or change or change the name of this, and we'll just put uh, skin patch. Now let's move over to the image, and I want you to keep a finger on that Alt button, and that's the Option key on the Mac. So keep your finger on that, because when you press that, it's going to change to the crosshair that we talked about earlier. And so I'll press that down, I'll click and sample an area, over on the lizard skin, I'll release that key and then bring it over to, let's say, over here. 
on the hippo and I'll click the mouse. And now you can see that we've just applied that scale type of skin over on the hippo skin. But no worries, check this out. Since that we've created a, a new layer, every single time we patch, it'll place all the patches on a separate layer. So we can just turn it off anytime. And we can also lower the opacity of the skin patch layer as well just to make that blend in a little bit better. You see that? So let's just go through here and take our time and do a good job. And we will start making this skin over here look like it totally blends in with the hippo skin over here. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so you can sort of see this is a lot of trial and error. Uh, I will try a patch, and then if it doesn't work, I'll just go ahead and undo. And that's just what it's all about. Because we really don't know what something's going to look like until we do it. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out of the image here. And by the way, I'm using the Navigator palette, which is off the screen, to zoom in and out of the image. If you look at the lizard, you look at the back of the lizard, it's very bright. And we have some areas that are a little bit blown out, just like the tail down here, which is overexposed on the bottom of the tail. It's still a great photograph. It's just that some areas are just a little very, very bright. However, that the, the hippo head here, there, we don't have areas like that on the hippo head. So in order for this to look, make it look like it's in the same place at the same time, we should brighten the hippo like the lizard looks brightened and almost make it look like it's in the same lighting and at the same place. So what we can do is I'll click on the hippo head layer, I'll hold down the alt key, which is the option key on the Mac, and I'll come down here and make an image adjustment. I can select levels and I'll make sure to use previous layer to create clipping mask. And then I can just come in here and move this white slider to the left, and that will brighten up the head of the hippo just to the point where we think it's where we think it has enough little tiny highlights to match up with the rest of the lizard. Now, I mean, some people will look at this and go, I mean, this is absolutely crazy. I mean, just going through all these little tiny details, but like I said before, the little tiny details are what really makes the difference. And so this is what it was before, and this is after. Because you can see that the lizard has so much lighting on top of it. Look at that. And, and our originally, our hippo didn't have any at all. So let's go ahead and add that in there with the image adjustment. And look at that. Now, if we look down here, we can see that the mouth is totally blown out. Well, that's no big deal. I can go ahead and fix that. All I have to do is just go over to the mask, because anytime you create an image adjustment, really, it's not directly applied to the layer. It comes with a little mask, and you can erase away parts of the image adjustment and not have those areas show through. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just click on the layer mask next to that image adjustment, come over to the toolbar and select the paintbrush. And if you set a pretty good sized brush, I'll do a soft brush here. Because right here on the mouth, that just looks way too over blown out there. So I can click on the layer mask and that will make the levels and image adjustment go away in this area. That's really all I'm doing is I'm just painting on the mask and telling that image adjustment that I don't want anything touching this area, only the top, because that's really where the lighting's hitting is on the top of his head or the top of his nose there. And this area down here could 
almost be like in the shadow. All right, that's looking pretty good. I do see a little bit of discoloration. It almost looks like there's a little bit too much yellow inside the hippo lizard. Well, since we made an image adjustment, it's really easy. I'll just come over here and double click on the color balance image adjustment. And we can see the yellows cranked all the way over here on the left. So I can just bring that back a little bit the other direction. And that may solve the problem. I could probably just remove a little bit of green. The thing about this though, if you, if you want less yellow, then you're going to get more blue with the color balance. So I'm just going to go ahead and play with it a little bit here until I can get it just right. And don't worry about if it's not, if the color is just not matching perfectly right now, because at the very end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you another technique that will make the two blend in perfectly. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there, I think. I'll click OK. All right. Looking great. So what's the next step? Well, let's go ahead and darken the background area behind the hippo head, because if we do this, it's going to make that hippo head stand out just a little bit more. You can see on our, our completed product over here, we have a brightness and con or yeah, brightness and contrast image adjustment over the lizard. And what that is doing is it's allowing us to lower the background behind the head. And when we do that, it makes the head stand out even more. And so you can see this is what it was before, and now this is after. And so it just makes a huge difference there. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the lizard layer right here, and I'll show you how this is done. After I activate the lizard layer, I'm going to click over on Edit and Quick Mask Mode, this button right here, and I'm going to set the foreground color to black. And I'm going to increase that master diameter. And let's zoom out of the image just a little bit. And we're going to paint in the background here just a nice soft mask in the background. Because we don't want to darken the entire background of this lizard or the hippo lizard here, just this top corner. And that will help us make just the head here of the hippo stand out just a little bit better. There we go. Let's switch back to normal mode now. And you should see this selection. I want you to come up here to select, inverse that, then while that lizard layer is still activated, hold down the Alt key, Option on the Mac, and come down to the Crate Fill or New Adjustment Layer button right here, and select Brightness and Contrast, put a checkbox right here, click OK, and now I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. If I lower the brightness, you can see it just makes that that hippo mouth there stand out. Look at that. This is before. This is after. There we go. And since it is an image adjustment, I can go back to it anytime while I'm working on this project and readjust it. Okay, so it's looking really good. There's just a few more things I see that we could touch up. And a big one is, is that the hippo has a green mouth. So we want to bring back that original mouth color that the hippo originally had. Because we just have this color, uh, this color balance image adjustment over the entire thing. And that's just not going to look, that just doesn't look right. I mean, for the skin, it does. But for the rest of it, it just doesn't look very realistic. So let's go ahead and zoom into the mouth. And over on the color balance image adjustment, which is right here, let's click on the layer mask right next to it. Then over here on the toolbar, let's select the brush. And this is pretty big, so let's go ahead and resize this down just a touch. Then what we're going to do is paint over the mouth where we want to bring in that color. And you can see here on the final image, you can see the pink, because most, you know, everybody, or most mouths and animals and 
and stuff or, or pink. So we're going to go ahead and bring that original color back. So I'm going to paint on this mask on the color balance layer and watch that color come back to life. Look at that. Now he doesn't have green teeth, so let's paint over the teeth to bring back the original tones and color in the teeth. And I can even come back and just get the edge here of his mouth. And if you need to, we can make this just a little bit smaller so we can get into the tighter areas right here. Hippopotamuses have just an inch, they have such an interesting mouth. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in to the top here. Now we're getting, this is a much more defined edge, so I'm going to select that brush and turn up the hardness a little bit higher. And then master diameter will turn that down. Just so I can ride along the edge here. And bring back that, that color. Look at that. And this is really a lot of fun. It's almost hard to make a mistake. Even if you do, you can just come back and fill it back in. Fill the mask back in and get the color back. I'm going to go ahead and turn the hardness down a little bit because I want to get that soft right around the edge there. Make sure I get all the spots inside. There we go. And I can see some of the outline. If you look very closely, you can see the, whoops, you can see a little outline around this hippo head here, or the mouth, you know. And I can fix that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that. Uh, I have several other, several other videos on this DVD that show how to get rid of that outline. So we're going to go ahead and leave that for now. All right, what else can we do? Now, does the hippo have a green eye or does he have, you know, a different color eye? Well, let's go ahead and look. This is the original color of the hippo eye. So while we are still in mask mode here, let's go ahead and just erase away the image adjustment or the color and reveal the original color of his eye. Look at that. And we can just also go move down a little bit further here. That may or may not look right, but that looks pretty good. I think that'll pass. All right. Well, what else can we do? I mean, we'll, we can look around the image. If there's anything else that we see, it looks like this is just a little bit bright on the bottom of his mouth here. So let's go ahead and erase away some of that green. We'll bring back more into the darker color because it looks like to me, you know, this is, or it needs to be a shadow down here. And the hippo original color of the skin is much darker and we can take advantage of that because uh, that will almost make it look like it's a shadow. Okay, great. And let's zoom out here and expect our work. That looks pretty good. It almost looks better the second time than it does than it did the first time I did it. So that's pretty hot. And 
so again, it's the hardest part is really finding the photos to go together and to really make it fit like this. You'll get lucky and you'll just get to the point where you'll just look at a photo and you'll see an angle of a certain object or animal or, or reptile and you'll just know if it's going to work or not. So before I leave, I did promise that I would show you a colorization technique. It's not even really a big technique. This will add on another layer, but hey, no big deal, right? Come up to the very top. I want you to click on the topmost layer and make a new layer above that. And just come over to the toolbar, click on the foreground to bring up the color picker. And I want you to select, or I want you to create this blue color like you see here. I like blues in different objects such as, I mean, especially when it comes to reptiles and those types of things because blue brings out a lot of detail, I think. And it just helps things from looking so flat. So I'm going to select a blue color here and you can see that I have the only web safe color option checked, but you can just uncheck that and have more colors to choose from. But I like to have that checked because then I don't have to, I can just have less colors to work with and sometimes that's that makes it easier. But we're going to just select the, the paint bucket here. All right, and just click on the image and fill that in. Now, let's just come over here to the blending mode menu for this layer and select overlay. Now, by overlaying this color, you've basically applied the color to the entire image, but it makes everything blend in as though it's just all together. Now, obviously, this is too much. So what we must do is just come into the opacity of this layer and turn it down just a little bit. Now look at it. And I think the way it was before, it's still pretty good. I mean, we did a, a wonderful color matching job between the, the hippo head and the lizard. I think it's pretty good. But I promised to show you this little technique. I like to apply an overlay to that. And it also just makes that the blue just brings out so much detail in that lizard. Look at that. And it's just also just personal taste. So I'm just showing you something that I like to do and take it or leave it, whatever. Take it or run with it. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you guys on the next video.